Greetings. I want to show you how I've made some of my recent creations here. This is our flower petal uh, hat here, uh, which I had a lot of fun making. And it's actually using patterns that we already have, uh, patterns that it, uh, I've made for, for other things. And I'm just going to show you how to modify them a little bit and put it together. Uh, we're going to put this together. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time here to show you some different techniques with it, too. But there's different things you can do to make this hat, too, and combine and do other hats with it, too. So I'm going to start out with showing you these are the patterns I have uh, that I've used in the past. This is my autumn pumpkin hat pattern. I also did a spring pattern. And we're going to just use this to start out with our hat. And then we're going to use a uh, basic part of our top hat, too, to help out with that. So originally, we had our leaf or our petal that we cut out. Uh, simple just shape here. And I started playing with that because I wanted to see what I could do with a different leaf. And this is more of a maple leaf here. So what I did was I just actually took some of the flowers that I had. Uh, these were just leaves that... Uh, got from the dollar store and took the idea of what if I just made a pattern off of about two inches. I just need about two, two and a quarter inches. My uh, leaf pattern here was two and a half inches, but I need about two, two and a quarter inches. So I just cut off the top of one of those leaves. And with that, I just use that as my pattern. So it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be, you know, every one exact same. You can do a cut, cut out a couple different ones. And I just put it down and cut it out to give me a pattern. Now, I could have done it on cardstock, but I did it on my fleece material here. And that's something, too, that you can decide if you want to use uh, fleece or if you want to use your felt. Uh, I used fleece with this because I love the hats with it. I don't use the bodies with fleece. I don't think they're quite strong enough. But I found this uh, material at Joann's. It's a beautiful muted green here, different tones in it and everything. So I love the look of it. I wanted to do something. Uh, this was actually uh, in their remnants, which is great buy because I can get that for 50 to 70% off. But I also can do it uh, with my felt. And I can make the pattern with the felt. So I'm going to show you here with the felt. Also, just like any other of my, other of my you know, creations that I like to put together, I can do this all with just the hot glue gun. I can sew it or I can do the glue gun. So if you're thinking, well, I need to sew, no. Everything here can be done with the glue gun. And this is just a felt square. Uh, there's different color greens. If you want to do a darker green, a lighter green, if you want to do a combination, and give it more of a muted color, you could do that too. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the lighter green here just to show as an example here. And what I've done is I've cut out my patterns that I have for my autumn pumpkin hat pattern there. And we're just gonna take those templates. I'm gonna fold the felt. Same thing I would do with the fleece. I would fold the fleece over. And I'm gonna cut it out. Now again, I try to get as much of my patterns that I can out of the same piece of felt. I don't like having extra material. I always try to save it for some other time and find I use another piece uh, for the for the under 50 cents a piece it's not bad to get. Uh, I like to buy in quantity if possible too. So that's going to be the inner hat because I do two hats on there, an inner which I'm going to glue my pieces on, and then a top hat. So with that, I just turn this around now. Now here's where I do something just a little bit different with this hat. And I'm going to show you because this is, again, I'll get questions on this. I do the angle here. I have a one inch angle. The reason I do that is because when I make the hat, my triangle will be up in the center. If I do an angle like this to the, because I'm cutting along this line here. So the reason I do that is so when I turn it, my hat's going to be pointed in the center. Now, I'm going to straighten this out just a little bit more so I'm not wasting 
my felt there. So I'm gonna cut across this and it's three and a quarter inches across. I'll always get people asking about the measurements too, but uh, this is three and a quarter inch. My other one was three and a half inches across. Now, I'm gonna be going up following this, but because I'm gonna add some character to it, I'm gonna add an extra inch onto the top here. So I'm actually just gonna cut up and angle it up. So I get about an extra inch on it. And the reason I do that is it gives me a little bit extra to cur do the curly cue at the top there. I can put a little bit more character into it when I, when I finish making it. So again, I'm just reusing patterns that I had. I can make a whole new pattern and do that, but I'm just gonna cop, you know, do that real quick there to have that done. Now, with this left over here, I could take my pattern that I made, or I could just take my cutout that I did there and just simply cut around it. So these are gonna be my leaves. Now with this one though, because it is a wider leaf, I'm only gonna need 15 of them. That's right, 15, one five. Uh, the reason being is again, they're wider. So I'm not gonna need as much to cover the space. I'm gonna do three rows. So it'll be three rows of five going up. So if you've, if you've done the pattern before, you've seen me glue, glue them on there or you've glued them on there. Uh, I'll show you how to glue these on just the same way that you're gonna glue that on. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Cut around it and you're gonna be cutting out 15 of these from your felt or from your fleece, whichever you're using. I'm gonna set that aside for just a moment here just to show you. Again, I can now take this. This is my bottom or inner hat, and this is my top or outer hat that's gonna go inside there. I would sew up the side here and turn it inside out, or as I said, you can use the hot glue gun and just run a stream right down your side there. And just glue that together. And same thing with the top one, do the same. I've already got one that I've sewed together and then turned it inside out so I can use it for my inner hat there. Now it's just a matter of gluing those 15 pieces on. And I start with the seam and I'm gonna go up about a half inch and just glue it right on there. Just a little bit of glue at the top Glue it on. I know people who have done tricks where they've used a cone to hold it while they glue on there. You can do that. Uh, you can hold on to it. Whatever is more convenient and easy for you to hold on to that there. And it is. It's, it's easy if you just use a cone and glue them on. Just for speed here, I'm going to see if I can just add some I'm just gluing the top, as I said, putting about a half inch up on it. Now, they don't need to overlap. So I'm just having what looks like those little fingers there meet, just barely. Because what I'm gonna do when I do the next round, this is another reason why I like these muted because I have these different tones of greens here. The next one's gonna go right in the center there. So again, it's gonna go up about a half inch And what I would normally do is do all the way around first 
is get everything done on the bottom first. So let's do that. Let's just get, get the bottom covered here. Always get people asking too what type of glue gun I use. I use a Sure Bonder glue gun. Uh, I don't, I can't say it's any better than any other one. It's the one I've always used. Uh, are you going to get glue strings? Yes, I haven't found one yet that I haven't gotten glue strings or been told. Uh, basically, this is the one I've used all along, so it's been working well, so I stick with it. So as I said, you're going to take, it's going to take five of them to get around here. And you're going to see come together. This is the same thing that you've done if you've done the Autumn Pumpkin. You're just using different petals for it, different leaves for it. Uh, again, I cut these out about two and a quarter. Uh, you can go to the two and a half inch, whatever length you want to go with it. And then once I get all the way around, that's where I'm going to go on the half there. And then again, just keep going around. They're just going to, those fingers are just going to meet up there. You're going to go around the half. And eventually, once I get the second row done, I'll do a third row. So I'll have three rows, five each, going around there. Let me grab one here that's already done, saving some time here. So I've put, put them together here. I've got my top hat, inner, the outer hat there that I've cut out. Again, I sewed this one up here, turned it inside out. And now I can put it right on top there, glue it down. I like to, when I'm making a, you know, making one of these hats right on the seam there, fold that over. There you have your basic hat. This could be a gnome hat right there. You could actually take a body, put a beard on it, put some arms on it if you want, and you could use that as your hat. So you would have a flowering hat right there. That's just one way of doing it, uh, having it done. I can see, you know, I can see a couple different creative things done with that. Uh, you can change this up a little bit, put that up higher. You can put some stuffing in here and just leave that going up. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, you can again put a ribbon around here or something just to cover that seam. I'll put a couple flowers on there and that gives you your basic hat already made. Now, of course, with this guy, I've added the yellow rim. And what I've done with this is actually, I switched over to my top hat pattern. Now, I can either use the top hat pattern or my witch's pattern. Either one, I used my circle here for the rim. Now, the witch one, I made a little bit wider rim than I did the top hat. The inside, again, is going to be roughly three and a quarter inch. You can do three to three and a quarter inch on the inside when you do that. And then the color, too. You can use all different types of colors. You don't have to use just the yellow. Uh, I've used some different ones for different testing and everything. Uh, I've got my yellow felt. I do use the felt for this. I didn't choose the fleece. I used the felt for this. Uh, got a pink that you could use. Uh, purple would be beautiful. Uh, whatever light beige color that is. Us guys actually only know about six or seven different straight colors, so uh, I can't really give you all the names on them. But I'm going to go ahead, since we used the yellow on this guy here, and use yellow for this guy too. And what I'm going to do, as you can see, he's got a bit of wave and character to him here. So with the hat rim there, I gave it some more room. So when I cut it out, I cut wider than the outside. 
And I also rounded it a little bit, rounded in and rounded out a little bit. Again, just giving it a little bit more character to it. Going along. And I wanted a wider rim because on this one, I'm doing something a little bit different on other ones, like on the, the hat there, it was actually glued on the outside. Well, this is gonna be glued on the inside. So there you see, again, I could make another pattern and put it out there and everything. I've already created this, it's already made. I'm simply just modifying it. And this gives you the freedom to make however you want. If you wanted to make these triangle edges coming out, spiked edges, if you wanted to make something that you cut out and put that design around it. All different ways of doing that. And that's the thing that I love. I can show you the basics. And then the way you guys create it is just beautiful because I see all sorts of things then come out that are just awe-stricken because your imagination is so great and the way you do things, wow. I love to see you guys. You guys are the experts at this. So I'm gonna cut out my inner circle there. The circle I don't actually need for this project. The top hat I use the circle on, but for this project I don't need. And so there I have it. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect or anything, but it is close. I see people post all the time, like say, oh, mine's, mine's not perfect. Well, it doesn't need to be. It's yours. It, it's perfect to you. That's great. So before I put the top hat, top part on there, I'm going to take this, and I'm actually going to glue it inside. So I flip the, flip the bottom hat over. We got the leaves on there. And I'm going to glue it and just run it along the rim there. I'm going to take my hot glue gun again, just add a little glue. This is where people look at it and say, oh, I can do that. That's easy. Get myself stuck to the glue a little bit. Trying to do this quickly, but also get it on there right. And I find the more glue, when I'm gluing things down and everything, will start stiffening the hat up there too. Um, because sometimes with these hats, I don't use as much stuffing or any stuffing in them because I want to move them around a little bit. So this one I didn't cut as wide as that one you could see. And I've also got to trim it off here. Now, if you do want to give it so you're not putting as much to cut off there, less than that three and a quarter inch. Make that more like two and a half inch on your inner circle. If you make that about two and a half inches, it'll bring that in more and you'll get more of this yellow out here. Now I can either Keep going around and I could actually make another layer. So if I want to do like that in front, again, you have another option for another hat. If I do that with the three and a quarter and I have extra, I put it around there. Look how nice that looks. I could have another layer of yellow just going on that. And again, I have another different hat. Put my top on there. 
fold it over. And again, I can make something cute out of that and have just a nice looking hat there. So there's another possibility for a beautiful hat there. Here, I'm just gonna trim this off though. And we're just gonna glue that onto there. So that's a second hat that you could just simply make off of that. Uh, if you're not looking to get into other complications with it or anything, uh, just, just a simple way of having another hat. You can do all sorts of different designs. And I like doing that too. Uh, I put stuff in different craft shows and uh, different craft stores that I'm able to take three or four of the same thing and make them look different. Just a little bit different by changing how I do that. So here I have a rim to it now. I'm going to take my top of the hat there. And I'm not going to add any stuffing to it because I am going to do something else to it. But if you wanted to, again, you could just stuff this or you could just bend it over and have your hat there. So I'm going to glue this down. And as you can see, so much of this we can just do with the hot glue gun. We don't even need to, you know, do any sewing to put the hat on there, to put the pieces together. So once we're around, I have it all together. And you decide again when you cut it out how wide you want this to be. You can make it inch, two inches, however you want to come down there. And again, if you want it to spiral around for a second lap or if you want to cut out a second one, cut out a second piece and put it underneath there. Again, you're just giving a different character to it. All right, so here's a little bit more now. Now that we've done the basic hat there, uh, you can always see that I put a little bit more character into it. There's a little bit different things here uh, as far as the texture and everything. This is where I've gone and did some of the other tricks here with the Mod Podge. So I have the time to work with letting it set out and everything before I put together my gnome. So I pull over my Mod Podge. Now, a Mod Podge, you can get almost anywhere, Hobby Lobby, uh, Dollar Tree, they, they sell it, Joann's, Michael's, anybody has the Mod Podge. Uh, you, I find you can use any type of it, basically, whether it's a matte finish or satin finish, I'm going to get pretty much the same desired result. I use a half, a half a cup of water to my Mod Podge to water it down. And I'm just going to pour a good amount in there. No exact measurement on that, uh, but I am just going to get a good amount in there for my Mod Podge there. Now that we're all stuck together here, it's time to get dirty. I'm just going to stir that up a little bit. And yes, this is one of my breakfast bowls. Uh, my wife's been away for a week, uh, babysitting the, the grandkids. And i got to make sure things are cleaned up this morning. She'll be back later today. The fun part is i got to show that there's dirty dishes or she won't be happy. She'll think I didn't... Well, she'll know that I ate out every day. 
Uh, but at least this way, if I have some dirty dishes, she'll at least think that I ate something at home. That's my reasoning. That's my excuse. But please, if you do, use your everyday regular dishes or anything like that. Make sure you wash them out real well. Make sure you take care of things. Don't leave them sitting out for a whole day. Mod Podge will dry up. And as you can see, I'm just dipping it in there, wringing it out. I am coating it. I want my hat coated. And now that I'm good and wet in the Mod Podge, I'm going to take a cone and put it over the cone so I can start forming it. Now, you can use the styrofoam cones. I found that I like using the smaller cones. Uh, the cardboard cones are really good if you use the real small ones because that way the base can set on the ground and I can sort of finagle that a little bit. I can work with it and wiggle it around, crimp it a little bit. If you don't have cones, that's fine too. You can work with other things that you have. Uh, I'm a caffeineaholic. I'll go through at least, you know, Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper. I can use that to put my hat on. Because you're gonna have to leave it for a while to dry out. Uh, if you're not a caffeine person, uh, maybe even just a yogurt cup, put it over a yogurt cup. Find something. Uh, I prefer the plastic or the styrofoam to use as best. Reason being, if I use the cardboard and I use the Mod Podge, it's going to glue to the cardboard. Now, if I'm using, you know, something where I'm making a bigger hat and, the, and it's really not touching on it much, I mean, you can already see I'm getting it wet there. I'm going to have to go back and continually lift it up off of that and pull it off so it doesn't glue. Now, I can, I have done that, though, where I have used the hat and I've just used the cardboard as the hat. I mean, that's part of the trick, too. If you want to do that, if you're using a smaller, I'm using one of my regular bodies here, so it really, I can make it fit. You could actually use the cone and put it on there. I've done that, too. So it's up to you. If you want to do that, that will give it the stability in there, but it will be stuck in there. So you can do it either way. I've done that. The styrofoam, though, Seems to have a nicer coating to it. Comes off a lot easier. As it dries, I can mold this and shape it a little bit. The upper part, I like to crimp, curl, beat up a little bit. Give it some character. Twist it and turn it. But when I twist it, I like to keep it in shape. So I'm going to just grab some long some long pins here and stick them in now again you have to be careful that you're not sticking them into the styrofoam cone because eventually you want to be able to pull that cone out if you put them into the cone you're going to be holding that in there and it will glue to the cone now if you do do that which you might have to if you're trying to get more of a curl to it here Check it every now and then. This is going to take a good day, day and a half to dry. Uh, I usually give it about a day and a half to dry. So if I'm going to stick this where it's going to have to go into my cone, the more material I have, the harder the pins go through. There we go. So I'm going to hold it there. I'm going to come back in an hour or so and try to just make sure I can move my cone in and out. That's going to stay on there. 
Again, I can play with this as it dries too and move it around. I can put these out a little bit more. Again, I'm just trying to give it character to my hat. Now, the other trick to it, now that we've Mod Podged it, I love putting the color into it. This is actually done with acrylic paints. And what I did, let's see, I can pull some paints over here real quick. And again, the paints you can pick up almost anywhere. Uh, I've gotten them from the Hobby Lobby, Joann's, uh, even our favorite Dollar Tree. And I'm using a couple different colors, greens. Uh, I have a golden rod here that I use just for, to add some color onto the yellow here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my yogurt cup here again. And I'm just using some water, because I'm gonna distill water down my colors. And since the Mod Podge is wet, and I'm getting this wet. Adding water. I'm going to brush a little bit on there. And what's going to happen too, as it dries, since I'm going to leave it sitting like this, it's going to run just a little bit into that yellow there. So this too, even though I started out using the fleece that had the muted colors in it and everything, and you'll see those colors start coming back when the you know Mod Podge starts drying. This adds some more color to it, just brushed into it. Came undone there, but we'll get you. And even with my yellows or golden here, way more than I need. I can just simply add some, like I said, just water it down. Let it get on there. I'm not getting into artistic painting or anything like that, but already you can see the green starting to blend in there because it is wet. And you're just adding the water. So that way I can get the different colors in the hat. Different colors in my leaves. This is nice. I like it because it gives more of a texture look. As the Mod Podge dries, this becomes more solid, solidified there. And I add some other little extras there too for a bonus. But I got this hat now that's formed like that. And it gives it more character to it. So that, in a nutshell, is how to make that simple hat there. I showed you a couple different ways of, that you can add to it. You can just do the Mod Podge to it. Uh, you don't even have to do the Mod Podge if you want. You can add the paint. Uh, you can just do the leaves. Do it as a leaf hat, but also an extra little bonus here uh, because I like to play and I always like to have extra bonuses here. I made these little guys just to go along with it too, just for the fun of it. And these were actually done with the cones for the body. So I just covered the bodies with felt, but the hats, the hats for these little guys, I had fun making those because I Mod Podge them too. And what I did Again, something simple. I took that top outer hat, 
just made that hat. And you could do this. This doesn't even have to involve any of the other stuff here as far as painting or anything else like that. But I've already got my Mod Podge made. So I dip it in. Ring it out. And again, I'm just going to take a cone, something simple. Since I already got my Mod Podge, and it's so easy just to make several of these small hats here. And all I'm doing is folding up the bottom of it there, curling it around, wrinkling it. However you want to twist it. I mean, you could twist that thing up like crazy. You can do whatever you want. Stick a pin in it to keep it in position. Again, the trick is you have to come back and check on them. You can't just wait a day and then say, okay, they're dry, because they will dry to the cone. So I make something that's just got a little twist, a little fun to it type of thing that I can have. And then again, I'm just going to be adding the little flowers or adding some little fun things to it. But it's, again, it makes it more texture. It's a nice, hard, solid hat when you're done. You can decorate it however you want. What you want to do, again, is a couple hours into it, check it. If it's starting to dry, you could pull your pins out of there, and it's ready to go. That is how I've done this trick. Uh, again, it's nice and simple. It's easy. I hope this, you know, that this helps you out. Gives you a little bit more variety of different things you can do with the hats and make with the hats, especially as we go into different seasons here. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope to see what you can, can create and enjoy. Thank you.